Thank you for clicking this video. This is Bato Kutola. My name is Mujela Olua and in today's video we want to talk about judgment and sentencing in Nigeria. It's a very important video. I've talked about uh, enforcement of judgment but we've not yet talked about judgment itself on this channel and it's a very very important topic and that's why we've chosen to talk about it today. We're going to be talking about the, uh, the forms of a judgment, forms of a valid judgment, features of a judgment how do you know that a judgment is a judgment? When is a judgment a valid judgment? What's the time frame for delivering judgments? And uh, what's the constitutional provision? And the all works. I hope that you watch this video till the end. And if you have watched until this point, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. And don't forget to leave me comments in the comment section. And if you want to take the conversation further, you can always mail me at houseoflivingstones at gmail.com. Don't forget that if you're asking a question or seeking clarifications that require tailored you know, solutions or responses that will only benefit you per time, you need to book a consultation session uh, that's paid for and uh, we'll talk one-on-one -on -one via your preferred uh, medium. But if you're asking a general question, something that other people can learn from or that uh, will constitute, you know, uh, knowledge that other people can benefit from you can always drop the comments in the comment section or even mail me and I will get to it as soon as possible what is judgment judgment is the final decision of a court in a matter it's not to be confused with a ruling because sometimes especially laymen they would go to court and the court will deliver a ruling on uh, a motion that's been uh, filed in the course of a trial or a matter and then they would assume that that's the final judgment or maybe when they see one party jubilating they would think that oh the party has already won the case no judgment is different from a ruling we're probably going to be talking about a ruling in another video but a ruling is a temporary judgment it is for any application made during the pendency of a case or on any uh, process filed before the court that's an application the decision is a ruling but judgment is the final decision in the matter so a judgment can be appealed and a ruling can also be appealed so we'll talk about that much later probably in the video on rulings or if time permits in this video but you should know that a ruling is different from a judgment so a judgment is the final decision of the court in a matter and it's usually on the basis of the judgment that we refer to cases as judicial precedents. A judgment consists of um, a raxio decidendi and an obita dictum. A raxio decidendi means reason for the decision, raxio decidendi. So that means how did the court arrive at this judgment? What was uh, the uh, rationale for deciding this matter in this way? The Raxio Decidendi is the reason for the judgment. It's the key part of the judgment. And then we have Obita Dictum. Obita Dictum means sayings by the way. Those are things that the judges say around the reason for making their judgment. So it is not the most important part of the judgment. It is not the main judgment because sometimes people read judgments of the court or maybe uh, news media, they pull out the Obita and, and they publicize it as if that is the main decision. No. These are just sayings, by the way, that can be cited in the future as well, which can guide another court's decision, but which are not binding. What is binding and what constitutes judicial precedence, you know, really is uh, the raxio decidendi, the reason for the decision. So a judgment always contains the two, raxio decidendi and obita dictum. Let's talk about the content of a valid judgment. A valid judgment must contain the following number one it must be in writing so a judgment must be written the court cannot pronounce uh, oral judgments judgments in Nigeria must be written down and then orally delivered by the judge but it must be written that's the first thing the second thing is that it must contain points for determination and usually those points for determination are drawn from uh, the party's written addresses. We've talked about uh, adoption of written address on this channel and I've talked several in different videos about how, you know, filing a written address signals the end of a matter in Nigeria. So, so once the matter has ended and the uh, written address has been filed, the court will now decide on the basis of the written addresses from both parties. So usually in the written address you would have points for determination things that you want the court to determine for you. 
For instance, if it were to be um, a labor and employment matter, you could have number one, you want the court to decide if uh, the employment uh, of the claimant uh, is of st has a statutory flavor. Two, if it has statutory flavor, was it determined according to the laid down procedure for determining or for ending such employment? Three, if not, is uh, uh, the claimant entitled to the claims? You know, so many uh, uh, issues for. Uh, points for determination. So a judgment must contain the points for determination. A judgment must also contain the raxio decedent, like I said, the reasons for the decision the court arrived at. A judgment must also contain, number four, um, the decisions based on the reasons for deciding. So on one, the court might say that, okay, our first decision is that this employment is of statutory flavor. So that's a decision. So judgment is usually an aggregate of several decisions. Lastly, a judgment must be dated and signed. Dated and signed and sealed by the judge or by the magistrate that is delivering the judgment or that is pronouncing the judgment. So very important. Those things must be contained in a judgment for us to say that this is a valid judgment. Now, let's talk about the form of a valid judgment. We talked about the content. Now, the form of a valid judgment. The first thing, of course, is that a valid judgment's form is written. It must be in written form. So it must be in writing. Then it must capture all the issues raised. It must capture all the issues raised in the defendant's and the claimant's or the state's uh, prosecution's final written addresses. A judgment must capture all the issues raised. It must address all those issues. It must, of course, be signed. So the form is signed or an unsigned or undated judgment is not a valid judgment in form. A judgment must contain the reason for the decision and the decision itself. So. These are the forms of a valid judgment. And also, a valid judgment must convict. Another thing is that judgment. a judgment must contain conviction and then sentencing. So, if it's a criminal matter, the accused person must have been convicted before they are sentenced. Let's talk about the time frame within which a judgment is to be delivered. A judgment, according to the Constitution, if you check Section 294, it says that a judgment must be delivered within 90 days after the adoption of written addresses. So after both parties have adopted their final written addresses, the next thing is for um, judgment. And the judgment must be within 90 days. So when you count 90 days after a written address has been adopted, the written addresses of both parties have been adopted, the judgment must have been delivered within those days. If the court delivers judgment outside of those 90 days, uh, a party can appeal the judgment and get it nullified. So not delivering a judgment within 90 days can nullify the judgment. And it's a constitutional matter. That means that it uh, cannot be negotiated. So it is a requirement that 90 days after the matter has ended by the adoption of written addresses, the, the court, the judge, must deliver their judgment in the matter. It is a constitutional requirement and cannot be overlooked. I was in court one day and uh, it was uh, a, a robbery, armed robbery matter. It had gone on from 2007 and that year was 2000. And, uh, it had gone on from 2007 to uh, the year that I was in court uh, listening to the judgment. It wasn't my case, but that year was 2021. So you can tell the number of uh, years that it took. In fact, the case started in another jurisdiction. The judge had been transferred within the same jurisdiction, of course, but another uh, town. So the judge had been transferred and she had heard the remaining case and then she was deciding, giving the judgment. But it was already outside of 90 days after the written address had been filed. I was telling someone, I said, if and it was a, a, a uh, death sentence. So I was telling someone that if... Uh, the lawyer knows what he's doing. He can appeal this judgment. And then I now asked a question. I was uh, discussing with a colleague, and then I asked, what is the purpose of delivering such judgment? Now, the uh, victims, the nominal complainants, uh, their lawyer, their prosecution told me that, you know, they had followed the case from start. They had been committed. They were coming all the way from their town for the case, and uh, even for the judgment on that day, they were in court. Husband and wife, they had been robbed blind and they never recovered their business, and they never recovered. When I listened to the content of the judgment, it showed that the defendants were, you know, unrepentant 
robbers, armed robbers. So it was a terrible situation. And now they would go on thinking that they finally got justice at the end because they sentenced one person to death, freed one person, you know. Oh, what if they wake up tomorrow and find that the counsel to the defendant has appealed the judgment on the ground that constitutionally the judge was supposed to deliver the judgment within 90 days and she did not. She delivered the judgment outside of 90 days. So it's like a pirate victory, if you ask me. You have, to, you have shown this person that, oh, the court will give you justice if you are uh, persistent. But now, you have gone against the Constitution, and the Constitution is the ground norm. It is supreme. I did not hear anything about the case again, but if the person, uh, if the defense should uh, appeal the judgment, they would be right, you know, on the grounds of uh, technicalities. Of course, you know, uh, several judgments in Nigeria have shown us that we practice technicalities in Nigeria, and even at the expense of justice in most cases. So, ordinarily, the court should deliver judgment within 90 days after the adoption of written address, or if parties are not filing written address, after the last witness has been taken, 90 days after that day, you know, the judgment must have been delivered. So if uh, uh, the court goes against this, a party, an aggrieved party, can sue, appeal, and on appeal, the judgment may be nullified. You know, it will render everything a wasted effort, because now uh, they would probably uh, say that uh, it should go for a retrial or whatnot, but you know, it's like wasted effort, wasted time, wasted resources. So, constitutionally, a judgment must be delivered within 90 days from uh, the filing of uh, adoption of the written address. Let me read it to you. I'm reading uh, section 294 of the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria. It says, every court established under, every court established under this constitution shall deliver its decision in writing not later than 90 days after the conclusion of evidence and final addresses and furnish all parties to the course of matter determined with duly authenticated copies of the decision within seven days of the delivery thereof. So it's saying that judgment must be delivered within 90 days and the judgment, a copy, copies of the judgment must be given to the parties within seven days of delivering the judgment. Of course, you know that the court does not comply with this. As a lawyer, you have to go and, you know, run after the registry and the registrars to get copies of the judgment in most cases but this is what the constitution says then who can deliver the judgment the judge that had the matter must be the one to deliver the judgment so this has been another uh, bone of contention in nigeria and it has occasioned a lot of injustice i'll give an example with the oji Kalu case oji Kalu is a current uh, member of the senate in nigeria he was uh, indicted for uh embezzling some funds, some billions of naira, and then it was tried, arraigned by EFCC, uh, and uh, tried to, to a logical conclusion, and it was sentenced to uh, 12 years imprisonment. It was sentenced to uh, prison, to uh, a prison term. And um, he and another defendant, he had a co-defendant, he had a co-defendant. So they were both sentenced. The uh, co-defendant got 10 years, he got 12 years. And then, I believe they had even started serving their sentences, and then the co-defendant appealed the judgment on the basis of the fact that the judge who heard the judgment, Justice uh, Idris uh, Mohammed, who heard the judgment, had been elevated to a higher court. Then he now came back, he was elevated to a higher court, he now came back and delivered the judgment. So what the Constitution says, what the law says, is that if a judge has been elevated he cannot come back to deliver judgment in that same court no now the uh, administration of criminal justice law, administration of criminal justice law section 281 says that where a judge or magistrate having tried a case is prevented by illness or other cause from delivering his judgment or sentence if such judgment and sentence has been reduced into writing and signed by the judge or magistrate it may be delivered and pronounced in open court in the presence of the defendant by any other judge or magistrate. So a judge that hears the matter must be the one that would write the judgment and sign it. But, and the constitution says he must be the one to deliver it. Now, administration of criminal justice law says that in case he cannot deliver it because of ill health, another judge or magistrate, his learned brother, can deliver it once he has written and he has signed it in his name. And he cannot now deliver it. Another judge or magistrate can deliver it on his behalf. But in the case of Oji Uzokali, what happened was that the judge had been elevated. So that would be another course. And now, another judge could have delivered it for him because of that course. But what did he do? He came back 
to the court, the lower court where he left, to deliver the judgment in the matter that he had tried before he was elevated. So that was the point of appeal that got the judgment nullified. And because the court had set free a co-defendant, since the judgment was binding on both defendants, Ojiuz Kalu was set free as well on a platter of gold. So like I said, we are practicing a system of technicalities. So when it comes to judgment, there are a lot of technicalities, a lot of technicalities that come into play. In fact, there's one that's currently brewing, but because it's subjudice, I would not like to comment on it. But when it comes out, you would also find out that it was a case of a technicalities uh, of uh, the mode and the forms of uh, judgment delivery, writing, and what's not. So, very important. These things, just go to the Constitution. The Constitution is supreme, no matter what any other law you know, allows. The Constitution is the ground norm. So whatever the Constitution says until it is amended is binding. So uh, please pay attention. Now, I said that there must be conviction before sentence. Conviction is declaring the uh, accused person in a criminal matter now, guilty or not guilty. This uh, does not apply to a civil matter. So uh, the court must first declare the person guilty before they can say that you are sentenced, before it can say that you are sentenced to maybe 10 years, 5 years, or option of a fine, or what have you. So there must be a conviction. And if it's saying that you're not guilty, then the sentence is you are uh, free, you are discharged and acquitted. Yes, but there must be a conviction before a sentencing. So conviction is different from sentencing. So you first declare the person guilty or not guilty. A conviction and then a sentencing. That is a criminal judgment. And then in civil judgments, of course, the decision is made and read. So there must be a, a judicial a decision, reason for the decision, and then orbital dictum. And both of them will come together as a, the decision in the matter. So that is judgment in Nigeria. Let me also mention that I made a video on allocutors. Please watch the video and uh, if time permits and if uh, it fits into our uh, calendar, we might make a video on uh, sentencing separately and uh, conviction probably separately or together conviction and sentencing. So, uh, and then we have a judgment, uh, conviction allocutors and then sentencing. That's the order for a criminal uh, judgment. And then the judgment can be appealed. So the judgment can be appealed. There are days within which uh, an appeal must be filed in different cases and instances. Uh, we've mentioned some of them in some videos, like the video I did on uh, civil appeals. Uh, please watch all those videos and um, read up uh, the constitution, the rules of courts, of the different courts, especially the rules of the court of appeal. If you're applying to the Court of Appeal, the rules of the High Court, if you're applying to the High Court from a lower court, if you're applying to uh, the High Court from a lower court. So that's all I have for you in this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video. I will see you in my very next video. To do.